And this video will cover everything you need to make wireframes like a professional. A wireframe is a simple blueprint of a website or app. It helps you map out your content layout, save time and effort when designing, and helps in testing for usability. All in all, it's super useful and everyone should know how to make one. All right, let's start with the basics. A finished product needs the right elements so a developer can say, coding this is gonna be so easy but wireframes aren't final designs. So instead, focus on shapes, image placeholders, and generic text. The goal is to map functionality, not create a polished design. And usually before jumping into Figma, I start by creating wireframes on paper. A little something like this. So here you've got four screens, you've got a bunch of annotations, and this would be for a travel app. Sketching helps explore ideas fast and it solidifies layout decisions. And once I have a strong foundation, I move the best concepts into Figma use simple rectangles and lines to block out key sections. So I've got my hero section kind of up here and then two images down here. You get the gist, a bit like the wireframe. There are three types of wireframes, low, mid, and high fidelity. The higher fidelity, the more details. And we designers love details. We spend hours picking the right fonts, choosing the right color palettes, but that's not the goal here. It's to try multiple layouts to find what works. So you stick to black, white, and gray. And see, that's why I like low fidelity wireframes. They help explore ideas fast. And Figma only makes this easier with its UI kits. These are kits with pre-made UI components you can directly use in your designs. So you don't need to design from scratch anymore. And there are premium options that include Outline and Platforma, but if you're on a budget, there are also free ones too, like this one from Nailul Iza. Uh, yeah, I really hope I said your name right. Anyway, I've used it before and it's great. Now, let's talk about spacing and consistency. Now, designs need balance, room to breathe, and good spacing creates a smooth user flow while making sure everyone can read the content on your page. Without this, designs just look messy, and a great way to fix that is by using grids and guides when creating your wireframes. And to keep margins, padding, and alignment consistent, you can turn on Figma's layout grids to help. And once you have a layout you're happy with, the next thing to do is to add context. See, designers and developers don't always agree. And that's because creativity often clashes with feasibility. That's why communication is important. You can do that by using annotations and labels to guide your theme through your design and thought process. And there's tools like Redline in Figma that help with this. Now you can also see this in my hand-drawn wireframes, as in it you have little names for the various components and basic information about the pages up top, just, you know, to give uh, fellow designers an idea of what I was working with or my thought process throughout. All right, so let's recap what we've learned. Wireframes have to be clear and functional, so you should start with sketches on paper before moving to Figma, and you should focus on the structure and layout. Once you have a decent layout, you use a UI kit to speed up the process while using grids and guides for consistency. And finally, you have to add labels and annotations to help your team fully understand your design. And if you keep all these things in mind, you'll end up going from a wireframe like this to something that looks like this, a beautiful finished design that you can be proud of. Now, if you found this helpful, drop a comment below and subscribe for more UX design tips here at LogRocket. Thank you.